قالوا لي انه ما 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 في ضروره ابدا I was told I do not need even at all to introduce myself but uh, politely I would like to introduce myself since you may not all know me my name is Nahla Shahal I used to be a political psychology professor at the Lebanese University and then in Paris and a researcher and currently I have a weekly uh, uh, a magazine Asafir al-Arabi that is every uh, Thursday with Asafir newspaper but it is independent I will have to read. I I am I can speak for half an hour. I have no no problem, but I prefer to read in order to keep the thread of my thoughts. I may sometimes drift away from the text, but since there is interpretation, I will try to stick to the text. Uh, my intervention from waste to the regime links and uh, cuts. The crisis of uh, waste, as uh, said, has revealed uh, new levels and meanings of our situation here in Lebanon and also in other places of the Arab world. The piling up of waste in the uh, city, in the capital, and reaching heaps and widths that are completely imaginary. This made us think of a disastrous city while the normal life was still ongoing. And this was a first shocking contradiction that requires from us to look into a certain specificity of the Lebanese community, and that is uh, this uh, capability to adapt. And what is important is to look at this capability to adapt, and this is possible because this is not something that is, is uh, uh, essentialist, so to say. This is how people go about in Lebanon, and they managed, I, I, I don't know how they managed uh, with the crisis of the waste, by adding uh, the piles of waste to their behavior, and they adapted to a large extent with what is happening to them. But the biggest second shock was when they left this waste piling up to such an extent without even having a certain discourse from the authorities that is up to the event or to the level of what is happening that gives its justification even if false and, and, and uh, uh, informed justification. Between 17 uh, July and 22 August, the uh, first time you think uh, came, took to the streets, one month has gone without any uh, presence of the authority, except when they took a technical measure to spray some lime over the waste in order to reduce only this, the smell and the rodents and the flies and we were still in summer, hot summer and apparently in winter is not going to be any easier. What is the meaning of this silence? After this giving up on managing a public affair that is flagrant, flagrant like the waste uh, uh, file, other public affairs like uh, education, health and uh, other rights are abandoned from a long, long time ago. And the last time they dealt with the such files, uh, they were under Shihab. None of you was even born. In, anyways, uh, the Shihab uh, epoch was very quick. And uh, the attempts that started under Shihab between 58 and 64 quickly have gone by and disappeared. So. Uh, what happened with the waste crisis has its symbolic and uh, material uh, meaning. It is a daily issue and it is something that touches everybody, the rich and the poor, who, even if the rich sometimes do not uh, find the piles of waste in their residence areas, however, they have to see it and they cannot exclude and isolate them themselves from this waste, as with what happens when it comes to education, housing, water, uh, corrupt, uh, corruption, uh, social benefits, they live something different, the rich, they don't live all of this. The waste piling up also means symbolically, since they are garbage, 
they mean that our situation has reached a, 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 a miserable and extreme situation. In fact, yes, it seems that the Lebanese regime today has reached a certain level of stripped structure, if we may say. In here, we do not want to insult, not at all. Today, all the institutions of the regime are completely disrupted, paralyzed. And we mean the mechanisms are the same. It's not that uh, the regime is shortcoming or is a failure in the eyes of the opponents. It's from within. It goes beyond the description of the crisis. You know the political and constitutional uh, aspects that are current. No president a parliament that extended for itself, a cabinet that does not meet, and if it meets, it doesn't take any decision, it cannot manage anything, and there is this dialogue, national dialogue, with all its shapes that has changed into a, a kind of committee, not more. As for the other aspects of this denuding of the regime, they are more flagrant. The regime today looks like a skeleton. And everybody agrees to say that the compromise from which it derives its legitimacy, i.e. the Taif Agreement, and that announced the end of the civil war, died. It was in the beginning temporary. It wasn't historical as was the national constitution that established the Lebanese Republic because in the national uh, constitution, the uh, elements of the deal slash uh, compromise are complex and they bring together some economic dimensions and social dimensions. The uh, uh, constitution of a certain drafting of a vision of Lebanon, of its balances that are operational and the way the uh, authority and the wealth can be managed at the highest level and at the lowest level and about the harmony between the two movements i.e. managing the wealth and the regime so the uh, constitution has led to a system as we say system there are other questions that uh, derive from this they seem at the first sight uh, the theoretical for example the political uh, feudalism in the definition of the Lebanese system, is it still there? Is it still correct? Not only looking at the renewal of uh, the representatives of this description that goes beyond the generational renewal to touch the uh, social source of the current uh, um, governors and uh, the depth of their relationship with the society. We should discuss this. It is important, for example, to uh, look at when Nabih Birri, the, uh, uh, who is the leader of the deprived, comes after the um, two feudal, uh, Kamil Asad Sabri Hamadi and their sons or those who are like them or who could have come within this feudalism uh, regime and uh, take uh, it as a heritage. We can also discuss what does it mean that Rafiq Hariri comes after the Soluh and the Karami and he is the one who consecrates this success story the American way because he became uh, an extremely wealthy businessman not because of Africa where the Lebanese know how to get their fortune from but because of his relationship with Saudi Arabia and he is a Saudi citizen as well and while he comes from a humble background and he was with the Arab uh, nationalist in his youth what are the characteristics of the renewal of the Maronite elite one can be happy and see wow uh, the uh, poor are getting to the regime. No, it's not like this. These remarks touch not only the heads, quote unquote, but also the whole constitution of the parliament and of the successive governments. What is the effective uh, factor in the uh, change that touched each of these categories and what does it say? This is, I think, it's a thesis subject. Those of you who are professors or those of you who are looking for a thesis for a PhD, I allow myself to tell you that this may be one topic. This indeed is not to 
lament over the Baik and those who were the elite of the people, but because giving answers to those questions can clarify the changes that have affected the country, not only structural, but also as a role of the whole country. And I want to underline role of the country. When it comes to the role, Lebanon has a specificity that is almost unique in the whole world, and this will make the Phoenicians very happy. That is the uh, harmony between the entity and the function. Not all entities not all entities have a function. There are some entities that exist and that's it, full stop. In its constant or modified limits, it can be destroyed, it can be eliminated, it can divide or to one entity or more. As for Lebanon, we go back to the constitution, the founding constitution, it is indeed a rational convention first and foremost and it is almost an open one that was established between the various components at that time and at that time supported by the regional and the international parties that are uh, effective very briefly and in the same vein in order to understand the depth of the current problem of the waste the special situation that the Mount Lebanon has had at the end of the Ottoman epoch uh, and and in order to mature the idea of the great Lebanon the vision of a Lebanon that is independent based on the both Muslim and Christian parts with a certain balance uh, between those uh, two uh, wings with the Arab region and the West represented by Europe the Americans were very wrong when they thought that the Lebanese regime is only a sectarian partitioning regime and the democracy, the democracy of the components that they used for Iraq as a terminology. And they did use it in Iraq. And I know that there are some people who uh, worked on thinking the Iraqi regime after uh, Saddam Hussein and when the Americans uh, entered Iraq, Bremer and the others, and even before that, some amongst them were theoricians uh, of Lebanon and rights uh, specialists. They oriented them, they told them you can use this pattern if you want. But what I'm saying that Lebanon is not only a sectarian partitioning, this is only an outside look. What they fail to understand is this special dynamics of the Lebanese system that does not uh, apply anywhere else and that becomes, if applied somewhere else, just a cheap barter. You take this, we take that, look at what is happening in Iraq. The relationships between the two wings of the uh, constitution in Lebanon were not only moral but they were also material economic and both external parties needed this Lebanese uh, role and I can here extrapolate and say that the condition of this role was what is called neutrality of Lebanon so that this balance is not shaken and this is what uh, uh, would have happened when Shamoun uh, called the sixth uh, fleet and wanted to join the Baghdad Union and uh, when there was the Syrian uh, uh, Egyptian unity and we would have to remember that Abdel Nasser presence at that time allowed uh, um, to renew this uh, deal after the uh, civil war of 1958 and all of you were not born i'm speaking history now this um, uh, the compromise deal remained in place and it renewed its functions its functions as effective commercial mediator between europe and the arab as a, cap a center for the capitals that are running away from uh, uh, nationalization and oasis for uh, health and education f and, and public education as well as you know in Lebanon before the civil war there were 82 publishing houses that used to sell for the whole region and the owners of those publishing houses said that their main markets were Iraq and Algeria and number four as a refuge for the opponents uh, from various parties and five as uh, an important place for tourism and leisure and all kind of other things without mentioning them all freedom in lebanon is all of this but freedom in lebanon is not only 
like Phoenicians like freedom. This is linked to Lebanon and its role and its function and its position and everything else. The turmoil in the region at that time did not cancel Lebanon. Despite all of this, it was a controlled turmoil, i.e. Uh, with the known results. The civil war between 75 and 90 meant that this general balance that I tried to describe to you was all put an end to inside Lebanon and outside Lebanon. In any case, leaving the civil war to perdure for 15 years meant that Lebanon was not, between quotation, essential for the region that has changed a lot. In the past it was essential, now it is no longer essential. And that the West is not Europe any longer and the civil war has mobilized alternatives for the Lebanese functions that have surfaced in more than one country. Stock markets here, tourism there, education there, health in another place. So recovering the role of Lebanon for Lebanon was impossible for objective reasons and subjective reasons. The problem is that Lebanon was not able to overcome the threshold of the uh, truce that was consecrated by Ta'if to uh, finding a new vision of itself that is new or renewed. There is no country of the world that has not a vision of itself. In Lebanon, we used to have this vision or perception, but it wasn't new nor renewed. This vision is usually the basis of the internal political compromise. This resulted from many reasons. Some are force majeure and they have nothing to do with the will, meaning that uh, it is uh, not able to be overcome. However, that doesn't mean that there was an elite, individual elite or, ca or a certain trench of people that suggested a vision of how people should live in a country where there is no industry, no agriculture, the Middle Eastern commerce changed and we don't have oil until further notice. Small country, it seems that it is going back to the times of aridity, emigration, heavy emigration after their livelihoods in the widest countries of the world. This was known at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. Under these circumstances, the mechanisms of splitting the authority linked to the partitioning of the wealth are disrupted and this sectarian structure seems stripped primitive and even uh, weak and this opens the discussion uh, b that the two mashnuk are representing the sunni without any makeup this is a situation or status of empty sectarianism the current situation or what I called the disappearance of the regime in or the system in Lebanon is not only the result of the civil war as is being said. Sometimes when we want to say give ourselves excuses, we say yes, because but we went through war. No, it's not true. We are not only wiping out the effects of the war. It is much deeper and it does not touch Lebanon only. And it does, not, it does not touch exclusively Lebanon, as I will try to show later on. Of course, Lebanon lived for a long time with the outside financial assistance in the form of loans and debts and grants. But not only on this, it was and still is, because I am being polite, because of the recycling of the management of the financial capital in more uh, in better terms organizing looting and corruption i can open two brackets here to say that and in my opinion this is important that rafi el hariri did have a vision of lebanon of course i am against this vision but at least he had one he had a vision or about recovering the role of lebanon it was based on the hypothesis that there is a comprehensive peace with Israel coming to the region. This is what 
was inspired in Madrid conference in November 1991 after the first world war on Iraq. We cannot understand the reconstruction vision of Rafiq al-Hariri unless we look at it through this vision that he was planning to by focusing on the small Beirut and by establishing the downtown and by the international highways that go from it and in all directions in order to prosper at the shape of the 50s which has happened after the Nakba of the Palestine and thanks to the Nakba of Palestine. But peace did not come. The highways remain unfinished. Now they are finalizing the Tripoli Homs Highway. I don't know why, but figure out that those highways do not reach anywhere. The highway of the south that was supposed to continue to Palestine slash Israel. I don't know. And and more of this, uh, this uh, uh, sh uh, shabby kitsch uh, aspect of downtown uh, came to be and it's empty and it did not play its role, the role that it was meant for it. The middle class is not, an op is not a concept to start with. The middle class is a reality, socioeconomic reality. It is true that what helps Lebanon is the small uh, size of it and this allows to cover the extreme poverty of its people. The UNDP say the uh, uh, inhabitants of Tripoli are, uh, UNDP says that 50% are below uh, the poverty line. This is UNDP, not the communists. And Tripoli, it doesn't even speak about the rural areas. So this extreme poverty that the Lebanese are suffering from and this uh, uh, wrong feeling that there is a still a uh, middle class is a mixture of the centralization of Beirut and the presence of remittances, huge remittances and traditions that cover poverty based on primitive consumption compared to other luxury. Nice car, nice clothing, whatever you eat at home, this is a different thing. What people do with their life, my neighbors, uh, they are middle class, they used to tell me, they used to ask me, why do you buy all these books? Why do you buy all these newspapers? What do I buy? I asked them, they said, buy gold. First month, second month, third month, buy gold, gold, gold. And then they tell you, change your car because it's not remote control. Anyways, what also helps to disguise poverty is the existence of some funds that are spent on the country from outside, including the militia's funds. We cannot ignore to what extent this is making huge categories of people live if they were not paid by militias. And also there is in Lebanon something that we should acknowledge, the traditions of a certain living standard that are inherited from the golden age. There are things that are inherited and that continue to be, at least in cer among certain people, especially in the heart of Beirut. Of course, with the confessional, uh, confessional uh, uh, groups and there is a big uh, a, a number of people that are the Christians who were linked to the West uh, five uh, or four uh, centuries ago. Uh, they opened the missionaries, uh, the printing houses. All of this uh, should be taken into consideration since we have to be tolerant to each other. We have to have all of this. But, and as was the case upon the uh, civil war that happened and all the ensuing events, especially the confrontation with Israel, the example says, French example says, on a les défauts de ses qualités, everyone has the defaults of his qualities. There is always another side of the coin uh, in a meaning. What I have explained above, and everything that means that people still continue to live is not an economic activity. It is not a productive activity. And even if it exists as resources, it is precarious, 
fragile and can change with the political fluctuations and with uh, tensions leading to costly confrontations and economic sanctions from this party or that or even uh, menacing with it. To come back, coming back to the movements uh, during summer, this tour of horizon, I can now move to a simpler, uh, easier remark, uh, mainly the feeling that there is a danger threatening the people of the middle class. It is a feeling that is shared by the middle class people in other places in the area. And it was one of the characteristics of the movement and one of the engines of this movement. Uh, waste everywhere in all streets and the negligence uh, from the part of the authorities uh, and its uh, impotence in terms of finding a solution. This was provocative. The poor uh, were used to uh, ne negligence from the part of the authorities and they moved from the feeling of uh, uh, sorrow to the feeling of uh, closure, despair, and even implosion from time to time. As for the real middle class people or those who suppose themselves uh, as uh, middle class people or those who have the ambition to be part of the middle class, especially thanks to their education, acquiring uh, new cultures and professions compared to their parents, uh, regardless of where they come from, all those people resisted. They were provoked, they felt aggressed, they felt the danger, so they resisted. So this was the first positive point. This does not exclude the intellectual cultural dimension for this position that was taken in terms of resisting and objecting this situation, humiliating situation. I'm not making a class-based reading that is primitive. Second, it has been proven that uh, there is uh, a part, a part uh, an important part of uh, young people, uh, men and women, who abandoned really and got separated from the sectarian mobilizations uh, 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 that used to be there. Uh, and this was very important this summer. And this cannot be compared in terms of numbers and quantitatively uh, to the youth who are mobilized uh, in the different communities and in their logics. Those uh, always told us, uh, go to the Dahi, uh, you find Hezbollah and Amala, go to Kisirwan, uh, you find uh, someone else. I don't know, those comparisons and analogies are not true. Uh, all to Tripoli, where uh, there are the Sunni Islamist, uh, at least you find some air, uh, some uh, passion from the part of the people. Regardless, uh, co contrary to what it is being said about the affiliations and the memberships. Why are they different? Because the dynamics that rule over each party of those uh, between the bloc and uh, those young people, with thousands of young people, are not one, and the a confessional uh, you uh, and the a confessional people constitute a uh, uh, a uh, trans confessional, trans regional, and trans social classes uh, a block. And of course, uh, they revived the hopes in the older people spirit, those who were like them, or and many of them uh, had forgotten or had isolated themselves. Three, those a confessional people uh, appeared to be critical, very critical vis-a-vis -vis to what the system tells us and tells them in Lebanon. And in spite of uh, the warning against politi politicization, they were saying we don't want to politicize. The issue of the waste, uh, the garbage issue, led uh, to issues like uh, corruption, uh, re accountability, responsibility for corruption and for repression i.e. what exceeds the specific point, uh, determined point, uh, I mean the waste to politics. And politics is not something uh, strange and mysterious. And here I would say that the slogan uh, uh, calling for the fall of the system was only in a, a declaration, an announcement of uh, this uh, separation from the system. And of course, we're talking about the system and not the government, this is obvious and the fear of uh, void and emptiness that might arise if the government collapses 
or uh, the destruction that will be uh, ruling over the country, uh, the Syrian way, which was uh, mentioned everywhere, uh, which and ruled over the discussions, and even the officials lied behind and ha were hiding behind this pretext, this kind of destruction, shows uh, on one hand a naive, a naive thinking, a superficial thinking of uh, seeing things, and also the uh, extent of the trauma that was uh, prevailing over the region because of the terrible situation there. It has been proven also that the sector that is a confessional, the trans-regional, trans-confessional, and uh, constituting a block, a critical, etc. This sector is modern, contemporary, and modern in its uh, means, uh, uh, resembling uh, what equals its, uh, in the world, in terms of Occupy, Indignados, uh, the Tahrir, uh, Maid uh, Maidan people in Egypt, etc. What, what uh, the, uh, the messages and uh, advice exchanged between people who do not know each other in person, and I saw so many of them there, with uh, in the social media is a proof to that they were sending them you do this uh, from Algeria from Palestine especially from Egypt from Tunisia and even uh, uh, Europeans uh, when they understood they understood quickly what was happening and they communicated with them as for the young people from uh, the poor and unemployed uh, classes who were uh, who infiltrated between uh, brackets the uh, movement uh, came for many reasons first that the problem of the garbage the waste uh, concerned them and uh, touched them and also because they were uh, they resided close to the places where the movements were ta were taking place and because also the movement uh, uh, turned violent uh, with the confrontations with the police uh, because uh, of uh, the decision of the latter. Uh, this is their specialty. They know very well what they do and how confront violent confrontation uh, takes place. It's not the AUB, the USG, or any other university students know it. This of course, does not exclude that some of them uh, might be uh, charged by uh, some uh, influential forces, but this does not apply to the fact that they are infiltrating, uh, uh, meaning that they may have uh, different vocabulary. Infiltrating people are always there in any movement, and uh, supposing that they are not there is naive. But uh, shouting and uh, crying about uh, infiltrating people and bad people uh, uh, came because they were different and before verifying anything. This was an announcement uh, first of a social infiltration rather than a security one. Also a remark, the uh, authorities contented themselves with their speech concerning uh, the uh, demonstrations only, uh, i.e. justifying repression and condemning uh, riots uh, from the part of their, and sabotage from the part of the demonstrators and the protesters uh, with a low and in, uh, humiliating uh, di moral dimension of like uh, intimidation, insults, uh, and I don't know if you remember that speech talking about honor. It is also worth noting that the ministries uh, considered these claims as rightful, and this is a new logic, and it is being, has been practiced uh, in many places after 2011 in the region. The authorities adopt the counter speech while practicing the contrary, the opposite, yes, you're right, uh, etc. either because they do not have a discourse or because they do not have a solution, so they lie or even as an exchange, a mutual experience between the different uh, authorities, meaning that this adoption then moving to the opposite is a means for, uh, uh, for uh, turning around the 2011 movements, like adopting them, glorifying them in order uh, to be able uh, to suffocating them easily and they greeted those people and uh, the three quarters of those who uh, greeted them and saluted them are in prison now 
It is noting, noted also uh, this, uh, the, the fact that the authorities are uh, uh, resorting to repression even when it is not necessary and then apologizing for it and then coming back to it again. You remember the wall, uh, the cement wall and other measures. This, led, uh, this is a kind of tactic uh, to attract the uh, protesters to violence as a reaction. But there was also this disturbance and confusion from the part of the auto, uh, security forces uh, with the different contradictions and differences. Uh, and they were really apparent. And it is also noted that the reaction from the part of the authorities in the beginning was uh, uh, in terms of supposing uh, the, the possibility of uh, expanding the, uh, uh, the, uh, the partitioning uh, practice, uh, uh, the very corrupt one, in awarding uh, to six uh, companies. And they di didn't even thought, think of uh, saving the face. And uh, this was a, a, an un, uh, a unreal and unrealistic uh, routine with corruption and looting that were open and overt. I'm explaining the nature of the system now. And you know very well that corruption and looting are uh, synonyms, which, which leads us back uh, to the schematization uh, of the system and how the system is uh, only taken by the most primitive primary and direct image, which is a new stage now. I still have two points, if you permit, that I will summarize and then uh, in the text uh, that will be published, uh, you will see the details. First, all this description is not Lebanese. This phenomenon is not restricted to Lebanon. I apologize here from the Phoenicians. I pretend that in 2000, that 2011 and all these uh, events and actions that took place all over the region took place because a development, a development between uh, uh, brackets uh, uh, took place uh, in the existing systems of the region towards contenting themselves to with a, a very limited uh, uh, vision of itself and its function with no social role, no, role, no management of the relationship to the society outside the a triangle of uh, looting uh, in the type of the type of predation, repression, and humiliation. Uh, in a comparison between post 2000 Mubarak and uh, Mubarak before 2000, and even Sadat, who was the father of openness uh, and liberalization, we find that the uh, second Mubarak is uh, uh, can, can be summarized ma summarized in. Uh, leaving all the uh, latitude to his sons and to the symbols of the uh, uh, political uh, committees of the National Party or the new entrepreneurs. Uh, this, this is how they were called, so that they establish what they wanted uh, in terms of companies that have the specialty of being external for the social tissue and fabric and uh, uh, stuck to the place uh, uh, or what they call Orsol, uh, the uh, technopole uh, in Al Maadi. This is really stupid to have this uh, in a, a place where we have around 9 million living in uh, shanty towns uh, and uh, very poor. I mean, half the uh, population of Cairo. Now I like the word uh, obsolete, uh, uh, like. Uh, a simulation of Silicon Valley or Bangalore. It is true that India has po poverty, but it has a structure. Bangalore is the Indian Silicon Valley against the uh, uh, factories uh, and the uh, and Harwan and Nasiriye and also opening uh, commerce and uh, works under Sadat and business under Sadat. Here in this also or outside the society uh, places, there were local uh, domestic, uh, uh, excuse me, limited uh, transformational uh, uh, processing industries and mostly in free zones, uh, uh, the offshore type, 
offshore but on the ground uh, that had a dimension, uh, the specific dimension which is tax evasion. And also public uh, spaces uh, were looted with fraud and secretly. And also education, health, transportation, construction were left uh, and the society was left alone to take care of itself. All public institutions were uh, neglected. Those who used to go to Cairo before 2011 were, sh were shocked because they were abandoned, a kind of abandonment. Those who are linked to the productive process uh, were uh, reduced uh, uh, and also the unemployed increased, uh, as, as well as those who live in uh, uh, marginal areas without any infrastructure, no services, uh, and the buildings that collapse uh, easily. So there was a, a, a general disaster uh, that was very visible. And above this, Mubarak wanted to leave the power to his son. What is the relationship between for instance, Burkiba, whatever is our opinion of him, and Ben Ali. No relationship, although uh, Ben Ali uh, should complete Burkiba, uh, but the first one had a vision, the first one had a kind of vision, uh, although he was crazy, uh, a repressive, uh, modernist, uh, he did so many things, but the second one had nothing. He just put his uh, wife uh, around him uh, around, uh, and his uh, relatives uh, and uh, looting the country. Even Bashar al-Assad went into this direction and every place uh, was uh, established under his father's era and he did not even take care of uh, the collapse of agriculture, uh, uh, livestock uh, in all uh, the areas of Rekka and others uh, because of draft but because of other reasons also. He did not take into consideration the exodus, intense exodus of his uh, of the population there and how they were moving and living uh, accumulated around Damascus and the big cities in a uh, uh, in a welfare country like Algeria where there is gas and there is oil the authorities that are characterized with the same evolution and development between brackets was able to compensate for the disaster just as the remnants uh, and the small remnants of the welfare uh, and rent here was uh, di di distributed to the people. And of course, uh, uh, the revenues were multiple and not restricted to oil and gas. And it, 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 there is also the security uh, welfare also, and we do not have time to talk about it now. The problem is that all those rulers do not have any explanation or any discourse but they live just, they work just like a band, in, uh, a gang in secret. They uh, were, uh, they found people to surround them, uh, people like businessmen, those who wanted to uh, seize the opportunities. Uh, and it was called by uh, sociologists, uh, they were called by sociologists uh, as uh, 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 Falcons, and they were also uh, businessmen who are looters, predators, and they had. To, they were also uh, smuggling and trafficking drugs. For example, their main characteristic is that they are not ready to invest uh, to make any investment in the country of whatever kind and uh, they were characterized uh, by uh, uh, the fact that they beat and run away. And uh, even threats reached the middle class and even those, uh, the former uh, uh, rich people uh, like uh, the th being, who were threatened in their life and their professions in the fearing of humiliation, continuous humiliation and provocation, the slogan of dignity uh, came uh, next to uh, bread, uh, freedom, social justice, uh, and the third, uh, the third category was uh, always uh, dignity. Is it a coincidence? Those people are those who went to the streets in Zahdahrir, and also they were joined by the uh, big mahalla uh, workers uh, who led struggles uh, to prove that their factories were able to gain profits uh, and uh, their liquidation uh, uh, as it was uh, mentioned and uh, 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 
targeted uh, had a relationship with speculation uh, and also in Tunis uh, there was a movement that was linked to, to the university uh, uh, graduates who were unemployed uh, like the the, uh, the one who the young man who burned himself and they were joined by um, the people uh, of the internal uh, marginalized the forgotten and desperate uh, areas and districts and also the workers of the phosphate factories in the south that who had to struggle uh, to, uh, against the speculation, all kinds of speculation, uh, commercial and military. The only thing that was renewed and expanded by Mubarak II was the uh, central security apparatus. Around half a million military, they were 100,000 when he took power. They were uh, 100,000 till to the year 2000. Now they are half a million. Uh, they have uh, double uh, salaries compared to others. They were very well. They are very well trained and armed, and they are concentrated in uh, Cairo mainly. All the, these uh, are uh, flagrant uh, uh, act actions, uh, and also uh, uh, with uh, religious extremism amongst the youth. The real situation, the reality uh, of the authorities, uh, and this is uh, an attempt to uh, capture the nature and the uh, direction of the dynamics uh, that are working, that is working on a change, and it is related to the three main fields for reaction of any pow power, any authority, the relationship with society, with economy, and with the world. A second point, and second and last point, is related to, to the universal dimension of this phenomenon. It has uh, uh, acquired a, an adequate uh, positioning, uh, uh, supply and demand equaling each other. And at the same time, the developments of our countries uh, were fed with this uh, uh, universal global uh, positioning and the global economy has become a bird uh, with uh, capit financial capital uh, that is speculating and crossing the world and also from uh, Bangladesh to wherever we want to our uh, countries uh, uh, there are services uh, like uh, textile and clothes uh, uh, factories in Jerba and Susa, which does not prevent uh, tourism. This is in Tunisia, or part of smartphone uh, in uh, Technopole uh, in Almaty, next to, to the international airport, and other things that are being recycled or produced uh, uh, in the free zone of uh, Port Said, Alexandria, and others in other places. Of course, our countries are still uh, uh, subject to, to appetite uh, because of oil, gas, and other precious uh, metals. In addition to their functions as a welfare uh, global good, uh, they provide a hard currency for those powers to buy whatever they want from the West. We have real estates uh, in Europe. This is part of the corruption and mainly uh, the purchase of uh, military uh, equipment. Here uh, comes an, an additional dimension, which is uh, make, uh, the exploitation of conflicts and wars uh, to sell uh, planes, airplanes, uh, ships, and even uh, submarines to people who do not know how to make them function, and they, do not, they are not well equipped, they do not have enough resor human resources for uh, uh, using them. This is another subject, an additional subject, and everything becomes easy for the continuity of this issue. Yesterday, a, prime, a French prime minister, uh, uh, in the midst of the tragedy taking place in Paris, said that Saudi Arabia and Qatar are partners of France and the world in the war against terror. Because, and this was an official declaration. Even the great powers become obsolete, of course, at different degrees. Our situation in Lebanon, dear brothers and sisters, are, is very modern and resembles the world. Thank you. ما كنت متوقعة معني أنا ريتو بالبيت كله
It's 8.15. Uh, I did not expect to take that time. I read it at home and it took uh, half an hour only. I don't know. I don't know whether there is this uh, habit to have some discussion, some debate, comments, questions. If anyone has any question, any comment. We didn't hear the question, we're sorry, but uh, she's, uh, Mrs. Nahla is answering. It is a proverb that says that uh, someone who is, for example, uh, uh, let's say a very uh, generous, uh, he runs uh, bankrupt before the end of the month, which means that there is nothing absolute. Uh, when you are an extremely, let's say, generous person, there is a price to, to pay. We, we cannot hear the intervention uh, without uh, microphone. She's speaking off mic. Say quality, it, uh, one's own quality. This is why I said this is the other side of the coin. Did, did I make you dizzy or anything? No? <laughs> okay. If, if you have anything to add, we consider it done. Uh, I can't see you because you're in the dark. I think this is uh, fashionable. Uh, Where is uh, the Islamic uh, phenomenon? You touched upon this very quickly. And uh, where is it? How is it located uh, in the whole uh, uh, region, uh, uh, the Islamic uh, trend uh, or movement uh, in the region, not only in Lebanon or Syria, but in the whole Arab region and even worldwide? What is the relationship between this Islamism and uh, the brotherhood uh, in uh, Egypt and Daesh, ISIS, uh, and the other movements that are operating in this world. How do you view this movement? The Islamism uh, trend is not only in Lebanon and uh, Syria at all. The uh, young uh, people in Tunisia in the modern areas uh, where 80% of the people uh, hold diplomas, uh, the youth coming from the rural areas or the poor youth, uh, I can tell you they're not different. Uh, it's something happened to me a couple of years ago in Tunisia airport. I saw two young guys and they looked uh, hipsters uh, or, you know, Guevara people the way we were in at our time. And I was speaking to a friend of mine, Tunisian, and I asked him, who are they? He said, they are Islamists. I don't know from which group. And I told him, but they are young. And I told him, they look like us when we were their age. And he said, yes, of course. Of course they do, because we are no longer a refuge to people uh, who do not uh, have any other place to go to. Uh, by the way, today there is an article for a French professor who is rightist, and he says those people who did this odious act in Paris are the outcome of our communities. If, even if you hear the rap, the French rap, for 20 years now, the rap songs coming from the uh, suburbs cry out loud and say this cannot continue and oh, nobody cares and they everybody's turning a blind eye 10 years have gone since the suburbs uh, intifada so to say or uprising in 2005 and nobody listens i'm not speaking about algeria and i'm not saying the, anything about it i'm speaking about now the social uh, reality that makes some youth uh, act like that today uh, they are saying uh, in the p newspapers that the unemployment rate uh, in this uh, street where many uh, migrants are living unemployment is 40 percent in that quarter or that street exactly the same phenomenon that exists in our countries meaning that the king of morocco can build a high wall 
behind which he can hide all the shanty towns of Casablanca, but this does not mean that they are gone away, that they, people are not hungry, people are not starving, that when people uh, to tell them that uh, heaven is beautiful, let's go to paradise and things like that. And, and look at the communication of Daesh, of ISIS. Uh, they are uh, very tricky. They tell them, come, you get your share, you get your share from this uh, earth before speaking about heaven. And then they feel that they are belonging to a network uh, where it's very difficult uh, with the uh, police uh, measures. Today in uh, a Safir annex uh, of every Thursday, the main headline on the front page is about the relationship between the youth of the popular areas and streets in Tunisia with the regime, with the police. How those people, after two times, three times, they are arrested. Maybe the first time he's a small dealer. Second time he's arrested because he used a knife, because he did this or that. In the end, he reaches this this network and here also there is supply and demand trust me i think that let alone who is financing and let alone turkey and saudi arabia and qatar and what have you and the uh, regime in syria and the aggression on iraq and its occupation and iraq is a huge country let alone all these politics and superficial politics in depth there is a huge incredible failure our return after eight years or after the ottoman empire has gone away and all the ideas of the nahda and renaissance and uh, controlling ourselves we are back to square one today we in our region more than anywhere else in the world but the whole world but maybe here we are more hit i'm not saying here that we are an isolated case we the frustrated the people who are not finding themselves are finding similar situations elsewhere they call it globalization neoliberalism liberalism whatever you want but it's not right that it is it has no solution it is not that it is the only development that could have possibly taken place historically it did happen but it was not obvious even for capitalism i don't know whether you are asking me about who is funding whom and who is supporting whom i don't know or at least they are in my opinion not important because i work in the political psychology and i don't do political science The existence of this Islamic uh, movement uh, since a long time, let's say since the 20s, with the early days of existence of political Islamists, they had relations with the government and sometimes they reached power. Can we look at this? only as a reaction to deep corruption and deep oppression and deep repression because they have their own view of the power and of politics yes and their view of life and of society of course there is this cultural aspect because islamists are not one block it's not like you say communist or leftist no pol pot he was communist and he thought that he was uh, turning Cambodia into something nice. It's not uh, this uh, horrible thing that we are seeing today. It's not like this is Islamism and that's it. But there is something else that we should mention here. There is one aspect that was not looked at and that it, the whole ideology, the whole Islam concept as if somewhere there was a reassessment. I'm not speaking about a huge reform in Christianity, but I'm speaking about only rethinking like the theology of uh, liberalization in Latin America. We in our country 
there is something not only at the level of Islam but also at the level of all the intellectual status I only said that there was no elite at individual level or at trench level but I said that there is a kind of uh, absence or lack or big problem in the field of intellectuals and the intellect a big huge problem but it requires maybe 10 uh, interventions I want to go back to the idea of failure of uh, Lebanon after the civil war failure of redefining itself yes of re uh, uh, refining a certain vision of itself yeah but if you look at the Arab environment you will see that all the time there was a failure of redefining the self or recovering a certain vision of the self including in societies that have witnessed the Arab Spring I have two questions the first question you have in front of you an example of success of uh, presenting a vision of the self second question why do we always fail why the Arab societies always fail in finding such a vision I don't think that our societies in general are failing more than once in the modern age we had a vision of ourselves of what we want whether we like it we don't like it it's something else but we did have a certain vision it's not true that we are always a failure along the whole line but now if you tell me where is the vision we don't have a vision we are in a clear existentialist crisis we are back to square one but it's not true that we have never had it those who in 2011 who have uh, moved they did have a vision even if it was short of reaching its end even if it was not mature but they did have a vision of what they want and what they don't want I do not agree with the theory that there is a sterile completely sterile um, situation Abdel Nasser since you are Egyptian he had a vision whether we like it or not uh, maybe the vision of agricultural reform industrial reform it came along with bureaucracy it came along with oppression anything you want is true but even Sadat had a vision what I said about Rafiq Hariri applies to Sadat he did have a vision what he wants Pharaoh Pharaoh's uh, Egypt we don't have anything to do with the region if I want to push it to the end but he did have a vision amongst uh, the Egyptian intellectuals it's not like it's coming from void I don't have anything to do with Egypt Egypt is a great nation and it can uh, do whatever it wants by itself uh, and it's not a coup against Abdel Nasser and all the rest Saddam Hassan did have a vision as well even Saddam had a vision he amputates the arm of an artist if he doesn't like his painting yet he had a vision part of it was dreadful because he didn't like the old buildings and in Baghdad they were beautiful buildings they were on the uh, river he destroyed them and he replaced them with the uh, huge modern buildings with the uh, uh, glass and aluminum and what have you but he did have a vision a vision of what he wanted there is no power that can be and continue and govern even the oppressor needs a discourse needs a raison d'etre needs a vision we are now at a very critical stage there is only the denuded oppression denuded looting and there is no discourse in the middle but does this mean that existentially we didn't have any vision no we have proven of history even Islam the early days of Islam the primitive Islam this is also part of a long long discussion but even the primitive Islam was an answer to a million challenge existentialist challenge it also was a continuation of the idea of the Ibrahimi unifying idea it also was supposed to be an annihilation of the current existing forces when they say no God but God la ilaha illallah it means that it annihilated all the powers that are around that are you know local powers only God God is one 
So nobody pays attention to the importance of this expression, not in the strict sense of it, direct religious sense of it, and we hear the prayers five times per day, and they are being repeated and repeated, and they are automatically repetitive without even thinking about them. This is normal. What I'm trying to say, and not because I'm optimistic or because we should not admit and accept how bad the situation is. The situation is very bad, and the whole situation in the whole world is extremely bad. At this critical point in time, humanity has reached a question about its fate even, not only about climate and environment and and destroying nature and, and exploiting nature and by mankind and its conception of its relationship with the planet Earth. It is possible the man can destroy the planet in reality, but in the end, everyone in his own background with all our differences, we have reached a point where we ask a question about our existence. This was not obvious. I come from a generation and I am the daughter of my parents who were militants and intellectuals. We thought that m mankind was heading toward the best and that was for us clear and that was only the rule and the, uh, of development. But today in Lebanon, because of the trash, of course, that revealed a lot of things in the region as well, where you are seeing everything dismantling and tearing apart. And in the whole world, we are facing this existentialist question. I'm sorry to go one level up uh, and, and drifting away from my presentation, but I want to end on a note, maybe coming from me, you, it may be surprising to you, but I think that today, Acknowledging the importance of so acknowledging the importance of the intellectual aspect is something very very fundamental important the intellectual challenge and clinging to a value system what does shame mean what does not possible mean we have no reference anymore whatsoever and this in itself reveals the sy symptoms of the illness but at the same time it should be the start of an answer to the question where do we start from in the midst of all this destruction those who do not have a belief no matter what belief it is those who do not have a belief that they are capable to continue and protect their existence they cannot do anything by the way if you see a country like France, where I lived for a long time and where I have grown up in French schools, even in Lebanon, if you look at the deterioration of the Communist Party from someone who had all the municipalities around uh, Paris, Les Maries Rouges, the red municipalities, someone who used to get 30% of the elections to not even 1.3% in the best cases, and now they are going to lose the maybe 1.3%. Why? Why? The reason is that they do not have a confidence or a belief about themselves any longer. And if they want to compete with the Socialist Party and other uh, parties, they will not be able to do it. Of course, the refuge was to have a vision of themselves, of their role, what they want to achieve. Imagine I was in Paris and I saw many people 10 days ago. I asked them, why didn't you go to Calais? In Calais, there are 6,000 people who are refugees or displaced who insist insist to remain in Calais. The Calais, they call it now La Jungle de Calais, the jungle of Calais. The socialists, the leftists, the ecologists, nobody went there. Only the police. And next to the police, there are the humanitarian agencies, and we thank them, and welfare association, we thank them. Christian and and Muslim Welfare Association and there is the extremist there and the whole part of the north of France that were historically 
socialists and communists will fall in the hands of the National Front, the extreme right, the extreme right that has an a concept that is racist concept, but they have a vision. The front, the National Front, they have a vision. This is it. Yes. Meshi, Meshi. The mic is off, I'm sorry. There is a failure in the project of modernism and renaissance, but it is, uh, isn't it accompanied with uh, this failure of the sociology that was uh, that uh, uh, was born with modernism? How can this science, the sociology, uh, be, uh, read the events that are taking place? Shouldn't we uh, revise the, those sciences? Can they still read? There is nothing called sociology. The, from sociology, there are uh, many uh, schools, uh, many uh, jurisprudence. And the, things, the thing I keep on repeating, uh, something that is related to society and before it to Marxism, those are tools you use, you mix. Uh, these are not religions. These are not faith. So you do your best to read them. Now there is a recent report uh, talking about the failure of uh, French uh, secret services. Uh, this failure wasn't uh, isn't uh, uh, information based because. They had the information, but they did not understand, meaning that they recognized that there is a one, cat one catastrophe, which is a war of Algeria, and also the, another catastrophe, which is the situation and the reality of the suburbs uh, in terms of uh, marginalization. Uh, they do not take them into account. Now they are telling us uh, their main problem was that there was a lack of understanding amongst the secret services, uh, not uh, the availability of information and data. They are uh, undertaking repressive measures and security measures, but this is not what will be solving the problem. But even if they are tools, uh, we are not able to get out of those tools. Do whatever you want. You can reflect whatever you want. I, myself, try to see things not based on uh, a specific school of thought. This is what I'm trying to say. I'm very selective in this regard, and I think that all people should be selective, and they should try to understand just like any uh, person understands uh, things. I presented my vision of what links the waste and garbage in Beirut and the uh, deterioration of the Lebanese system to similar uh, phenomena that led to 2011 movement in Arab countries uh, in uh, presenting uh, this uh, supply and demand in a supply that is global that helped this is estab being established. But maybe I am wrong. Maybe this is not enough. It's not sufficient. Anyway, I read everybody. I hear everybody and I listen to everybody and I take whatever idea even one idea that is good, I take it. We need to understand because we are threatened. The mic, please. Concerning the collapse and the deterioration that is taking place, uh, we are blaming it on uh, the rulers and governors of the Arab countries. I feel that it is more a, uh, a crisis of system, whole system, especially after the French mandate, uh, after the French Revolution with the uh, understanding of the social system. I think that Daesh, Daesh uh, is a real phenomenon, although 
uh, we reject it, of course. Uh, it is a phenomenon that has nothing to do with uh, uh, religion. Most of them are not Arabs, and they even cannot read the Quran. And how many Muslims do understand the Quran? How many interpretations there are uh, for the Quran? Uh, there, are, there is a real understanding crisis that has nothing to do with it, with Daesh, with ISIS there, but the uh, concept and the notion of social justice uh, is now failed. And there's something we haven't been able to achieve and apply after the fresh evolution, so a re-reading of the human experience in how these societies are managed and the social mind, if ever ex it exists, and our understanding of social justice, this is, in my opinion, the core of the problem. Because our rulers, our rulers just resemble any other rulers. I wasn't blaming it on, ruler, on the rulers. In one of my answers, I said that uh, I talked about cultural intellectual uh, aspects and how we should work on them. And uh, in order to create visions is essential. I am describing uh, when the at what moment the rulers are standing and in a historical uh, ter meaning of the term. And it is impossible for the rulers to find a solution. It's not up to them to do it. I uh, am reminded of something that uh, I all, all, I've always said. Uh, I was telling them. Uh, Daesh, with all uh, the rejection I have it and the hatred I have uh, towards these means, uh, how uh, human beings are being transformed into obedient uh, machines and robots. But Daesh was a shelter uh, against a state of dismemberment and dislocation. This was a kind of uh, reaction to the crashing to a proposal telling us just disappear. You are uh, uh, humans uh, that are uh, 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 over the need uh, of humanity. There is this problem, even if this is a frame uh, that carries this dimension, i.e. resisting this uh, crashing uh, status, unfortunately, the answer does not lead us to anywhere. So the mission is still not accomplished. It is still complete. And it's up to you, the young men and women, who still have the future in front of you, who should do it. That's it. Thank you very much for your attendance.